174 pounds. Robert Kokish against Cornell's Marshall Peppelman. Kokish currently ranked fourth in the country. Marshall coming off a big win off nationally ranked Hofstra wrestler. What do you expect in this matchup, Nick? Well, Kokesh, you know, described, you know, described at, from his coach, Mark Manning, as a beast. So, I mean, he's, but you know what? You got to get handed to, you know, to Marshall Pepper. He has hung in there. He was a stellar, he's a junior, but he was a stellar high school guy. He's had some good wins this year, but he's up against a very, very tough opponent in Kokesh. Kokesh is, uh, you know, he's a real special guy, and they're looking for big things from him this year. And I think what some people might forget about Marshall Peppelman, he was expected to wrestle 165 in the beginning of this year because Kyle Dake was a 57 pounder and he's bumped up and he's actually started to fill in. Since Christmas, he is 10 and two. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes, a lot of times, that's exactly what happens. You anticipate your weight class. You're looking at guys, oh, this guy's going to be in my weight. You're looking and you're scouting out your weight classes. But then what happens is you, you get Kyle Dake, so you don't really have a choice. It's not like, hey, coach, can I have a wrestle off? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, you have to concede to, to Kyle Dake. He's the man. And so he goes up, he fills the spot very well. He's been very solid since Christmas. And, you know, these types of matches against the Kokesh are going to are gonna be huge for him going into the EIWAs and the NCAA tournament. But if you're Nebraska, you expect, this, this is a match you expect to win. Oh, sh absolutely. Nice little single here by Peppelman. Nice goal behind him. Now, Nick, after that fall at 165, does that change the way the Nebraska wrestlers have to wrestle as they have to make up six points in a six-point decision? Uh, does, does that change things? Well, you never want to tell your wrestler you have to do what you get a tech for. You have to get a pin, even though us as coaches, we do do that. But you, because you want to get the win first. Get the win first, then look for bonus points. But yes, it should be in the back of your mind. You should be thinking about, hey, listen, we got to cut the deficit. We got to get a point here or maybe a major or a tech fall when we have the opportunity to do that. Because right now, you're down 16 to 7 to Cornell. And you know what? You really want to get to that national championship. You want to make it there. So you want to win this duel. And, you know, Nebraska knocked off Virginia, ranked ahead of them. If they knock off Cornell, they're ranked ahead of them. They're a top 10 team in the country. So, you know, Nebraska definitely wants to come here and, and uh, come into this match thinking, listen, we got to score. If Kokesh can score some bonus points here, it's going to help us close the deficit. If he gets a regular decision, you're at 16 to 10. And if he could pick up another point, it could play well for them at the end of this, this match. Huffleman back up to his feet. Kokesh drops down to a single leg. You know, you talk about coaching staffs, you know, you're looking at these benches, you know, it doesn't really get much better. You know, you you, you, you got, you have coaching staffs all around the country that are very talented. You have guys, you know, Iowa and Oklahoma State and all these different schools that have fantastic coaching staffs. But when you look at a Rob Cole and a Damian Hahn and all these guys, and then you have Mark Manning and Schneider and, you know, Jordan Burroughs in the room. I mean, just these, I don't really, I hope that these wrestlers realize how fortunate they are to have the coaching staff that they're they're a part of the, the, the program that they're a part of because it really is I mean you're, you're talking about the best in the business. Kokesh looking very tough on top right now. What does Marshall Peplin need to do to get back into this match? Well, he's down 2-0. He has riding time, you know, and Peppelman has to continue his winning ways. He's 10 and 2, like you'd mentioned, he's 10 and 2 since Christmas, so he's got to come out there. But you know, he's a uh, He's a very, very well-schooled wrestler. Kokesh is gonna give him a point. It's two to one right now, three to one with riding time. And as we begin the second period here in Ithaca, New York. A 
He's a little chain wrestling by Kokesh. He goes to a knee tap, then he comes back for a little dump position. Now he's gonna try, a, he tried to fade out. So he's chain wrestling, even though he's underneath Peppelman, and Peppelman has that front headlock, he is chain wrestling. And you know what, that, that plays on you. It doesn't play on you with this little flurry, but if he keeps doing that, okay, it's very tough. And sometimes you can break an opponent because it's just too much. That pressure becomes too much. Nick, talk a little bit about, if you watch Kokesh, he's pushing forward, pulling on the guy's side. How does it factor in a wrestling match? It factors a great deal. You know, like I was just saying, going back to what I was just speaking about, you know, you keep that pressure on. You know, maybe you don't get a takedown, maybe you don't do this, but you're taking a little bit out of a guy. You're making him work at every single tire. So it's not just when you're getting taken down and defending a leg attack. No, you're defending the hand fighting. You're defending a, you know, a, a front headlock position. And it becomes, it plays on you. Like right now, he gets hit with a caution. These things can play on a wrestler, you know? Especially when you wrestle a guy like Kokesh. I mean, he's one of the best, so he's gonna keep on the pressure. He's gonna keep up the pressure. Three-time state champion, Robert Kokesh. And, and Marshall Peppelman's kind of on that same line as uh, Chris Vitalonga, you know, highly touted dream team member, three-time Pennsylvania state champion. Uh, hasn't really lived up to his billing thus far. Well, you know what? You're right about that, but, you know, Peppelman, he's dangerous. When you have that kind of pedigree and you have that, that blue chip background, what happens is, is you usually do good in big tournaments. Nice little, that was a beautiful, beautiful takedown and a beautiful finish by Kokesh. He limped that arm out and got the two. Got 10 seconds left. You know, on that short time, I know Rob Cole just can't stand that when you give up takedowns at the, at the end of a period like that. And now it's four to one instead of two to one. That's big. But you know what, when you get, a, when you get the talent level of a Marshall Peppermint, you go in the EIWs, you go in the national championships, and he he knows what it is to win in the big tournaments. He knows what it is to do that. So you can't, you know, he's almost a catch match. Marshall Bellman is a catch match for somebody that's seeded in the national championships. You get him, you say, oh, the guy, you know, he's 14 and or 18 and, you know, 11 or whatever it may be. And you say, I'm going to get this guy, you know, I'm going to, and, and you tend to look ahead. You tend to look past a guy like Marshall Peppelman, and you should not do that because he is a guy that's capable of beating anyone on any given day. So you have to be very careful. You know, I, I know Marshall Peppelman for a while, and I know his talent level, and, uh, but Kokesh, obviously, to do to him what he's doing and get that takedown at the end and keep that pressure up on him, you know, it says a lot about what he's about. Okay, a little break in the action here. Marshall Pelpman got his elbow taped up. Looks like we're ready to go. Four to one. Robert Kokesh headed into the third period. Nice little sit out turn in. Gets that, that point, five to one. Nick, you can't be anything but impressed with Robert Kokesh's work ethic and just the way he carries himself on that mat, always moving forward, always attacking. He's really living up to that number four ranking right now. He really is, and you know what's great too? He has such poise in any position. He doesn't panic. He stays within himself, and he gets those takedowns. You got a minute and 30 left. He's up eight to two, but you know what? I hate to say this, but Peppelman needs to start working here. He looks like he's slowing down. And Kokos, nice takedown on the edge. And uh, you can see Rob Cole's face right there after that takedown, and that just... And remember, Marshall Peppelman in the first period was worn for stalling. He does need to get on the attack or he will get hit again. Nick, if you're Marshall Peppelman, what, what, what would you be doing? And there's that stalling call right there. Well, let me tell you, I, I sure as heck wouldn't let Kokesh continue to be on the offensive. I would put him on the defensive. I would be coming after him hard at every minute, of every, every second of every minute at the end, till the end of this match. You know, you got 45 seconds left in the match. It's 12 to three with riding time. Makes it 13, he's up by 10. You know, Kokesh, to, for him to do what he's doing to Marshall Peppelman is very, very impressive. And right now that is a major decision which will be four points up on the score.
And you know, going into the upper weights, you know, you're at 74. That's where Nebraska is very, very solid. You know, you got Ian in coming up, you know, in the next match, who was a returning All-American. You know, Caleb Cole, we've seen him wrestle before and he looks real talented. So, you know, this is gonna be a barn burner here for, it's gonna be a very, very close match here. Five seconds, four, three. And with the ride time, 13 to three.